Good morning, everyone. Welcome along to Alton Park and the start of a brand new season of racing for a rejuvenated TCR UK Championship. It's the fifth season of competition for TCR in the UK. And this year it is set to be bigger and I think quite a bit better than ever. We've got more cars on the grid than we've ever had before. We've got a more competitive grid than I think we've ever had before. And uh, I'll tell you what, the atmosphere in the paddock is absolutely electric ahead of this, the first 25 minute race of the season. It's getting brighter, it's a bit chilly, but uh, the forecast I believe is for a pleasant bank holiday Monday for us, the drivers, and the plenty of spectators trackside to enjoy. And hopefully we'll be able to put on some top quality tin top racing for them as the day goes on. Two 25 minute races to kick off the season, one this morning and one later on this afternoon. Andy McEwen here in the commentary box, uh, delighted to be back for my fifth season with the championship. Alongside me, as ever, uh, is Paul O'Neill. And uh, Paul, I'm excited about this season. The drivers are excited, and I reckon you are as well. Be here as usual. Um, fantastic to be at Alton Park to start the round, just down the road from me. But, um, you know, absolutely um, amazing to see so many TCR cars on the grid. Um, some cracking drivers have yeah. come into this now the ante track, has yeah. been up doesn't it and it's going to be really interesting to see where they all drop in um and see where where you know the the, the champions have, have passed and and also the race winners have passed drop in as well so i'm really looking forward to this very narrow round here i've driven a lot of tcr cars around alton park and it's uh yeah it's a bit tight now because these cars are a lot wider uh, than maybe 10 years ago when i've driven uh, other tin tops that um that you could get around pretty easy and they're a lot faster so i'm looking forward to, but some great pictures. I'm loving this uh, this live stream. This looks pretty cool. Yeah, lots of people enjoying the uh, early morning sunshine. It is an early start here today for us, but uh, if this doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will. We've got 24 of these TCR cars about to head out onto the circuit. And uh, Paul, you touched on it there. We've not just got a big grid, but it is a grid stacked with potential race winners, podium finishers, and ultimately champions. We've got basically all of the front runners from the last season or so back again, including the reigning champion, Lewis Kent, gunning for a third consecutive TCR UK title. No other driver in the world has ever won three national TCR championships, so he's back to try uh, and achieve that. But then a whole group of drivers brand new to TCR UK but who are proven in other disciplines in particular front wheel drive tin top racing so uh, you know picking even a top five is almost impossible let alone race winners yeah I'm with you on that I was here on Saturday just watching a bit of uh, qualifying and I was I wasn't pleasantly surprised I was I was actually very surprised about how some of uh, these newer names who have been in less powered uh, tin top front wheel drive cars have actually performed um, I'll be honest Adam Shepard for me who's one of the newcomers um, in the Hyundai he was super fast um, really really impressive you know running to a, a budget tight budget but there's a lot of stories up and down the grid like you say uh, that we can pick up on and um, these boys and girls and uh, and people around today at Alton are gonna see a really really interesting race and like you say it's pretty cool it's an early one how cold are them rear tires going to be? Because I've been on a test day here with a with a TCR car, and they don't get the tire temps up very very quickly. So they've got a long um, a long circuit to to give it a big weave. So let's see what happens. But I wouldn't be surprised. I don't want to curse it as the cars leave now uh, the assembly area. I think we might have a couple of cars off early doors. Wouldn't be surprised, no. Let's hope that they all remember this is the first race of a long season, and it's a long race as well. 25 minutes by touring car terms is a decent length race, so they can afford to pace themselves, and with so many of them barreling off into that first corner on lap one, uh, there's a good chance it could get a little bit congested. There you can see the cars pouring out of the pit lane, and uh, if you, uh, dear viewer like me, have been watching TCR UK since the start, this will make you extremely happy because they just keep on coming and an almost endless line of them we were actually supposed to have uh, more cars racing this weekend we lost mark havers before the weekend began and unfortunately hugo cook who never turned a lap in qualifying he had issues as well paul uh, remind me what the issue was with the audi yeah so had a bit of a gearbox problem i think on the run up to this weekend and then i was watching it uh, coming out the pit lane and it had some kind of misfire or the return of a gearbox problem it was an actuator uh, or something electronic uh, that was a bit of a pain for them so yeah they've packed up and gone home which is such a shame because hugo is a very quick kid 
he is indeed uh, got a podium at the final race of last season at Donington Park and uh, we look forward to having him back at Donington for the next round of the championship cars then uh, don't be confused as I think Paul is by them taking the uh, Foster <laughs> circuit this is the outlap from the pit lane so we are using the full circuit layout here at Alton Park today but uh, to speed things up on what is a busy British GT race day lots of races to get through on the outlap they take the short circuit they line up on the grid and then they will be released onto their green flag lap that looked like Rob Butler going rally crossing already uh, proving your point there I think and we're seeing it from Isaac Smith that on cold tyres these things can be a bit sketchy yeah they really can I tell you where it's really bad it's just over this brow where they are now see that bit of tyre smoke there that looked like Chris Smiley who's our pole man he just locked up a rear as he's turned across that uh, that bump on the exit of Druids and um, yeah it's I tell you what I am um, I, uh, I wouldn't want to be out there <laughs> at the minute because it really is difficult to get the tyre temps up on the rears of these cars. But um, that all adds to it, doesn't it? And that's the skill you need uh, to get uh, these cars round the lap. And it's a skill that Chris Smiley really ought to have mastered by now because Chris, uh, young, relatively speaking, though he is, is a pretty experienced driver uh, by this point in front-wheel drive touring car machinery. Many of you will recognise him from the British Touring Car Championship where he was a race winner. Just 29 years old, Chris Smiley, but quite well established as a former Mini Challenge champion as well. He was also a Ginetta Junior Scholarship winner, which I'd completely forgotten about. That was probably over a decade ago now. But uh, Chris Smiley, a man who knows what he's doing in these kind of cars, but has never raced in TCR before. So given the cars that he's had experience and success in before, are you surprised to see him adapt so well to TCR, or is this kind of what you expected? It's exactly what I expected. You know, he's a he's a quick kid, to be fair. And let me just touch on something. The cars you're looking at now, they're crossing the tyres, um, uh, front to rear in the axle. So obviously the front wheel uh, drive car nature of these cars is going to have so much energy through the front tyres that they put them onto the back axle to help um, keep these cars stable. And that's something that Jade Edwards has just texted me about and asked if they can if they can cross the tyres. So, yeah, front tyres go to the rear of the car, so you've got literally more temperature in the rear tyres than you have in the front now, but the front will catch up as they go uh, on their next lap um, of, uh, of the, uh, the grid formation. So that's the question answered there. Everybody will have done that. There's no, there's no point in going around on cold rears and, and really struggling. But, um, yeah, back to Chris Smiley. Proper effort, that is, from Chris. At the end of the day, this is a, a top-line championship um, that needs you know, uh, a good pilot behind the wheel. And the, the one thing I will say about Chris was he had four lap times deleted in qualifying, um, which is quite a big thing. I watched him run out wide quite a lot through the first corner, uh, Old Hall, and that just shows how, one, how much he was pushing, and two, how aggressive he is in the car. So if I was Isaac Smith and I seen that, um, who, who runs up alongside him on the grid, if I seen that on the timesheets, because Isaac didn't have one uh, misdemeanor, I don't think, um, I'd be thinking, right, well, those two tents that he's on pole by um, was obviously a big, big push lap. So if uh, Isaac in the one, two, three there on your screen can actually just get away well, then he might be able to just push him into a mistake and maybe some track limits uh, problems. There's Adam Shepard we were talking about. Um, this kid, for me, is... is He's proper. I've, I've seen him in Ginetta GT Super Cup. Always running on a tight budget, um, but for me, a really, really fast lad. Rob Butler is another one. He's come from uh, Civic Cup, and um, he's been a bit nervous for me because I'll be really honest, I, I know Rob a bit, and he's usually like a gob on a stick like me, um, <laughs> but when I've seen him in the TCR car, he, he doesn't really say much. He just asks normal questions like, what should I be doing here? But in an Irish accent, what should I be doing here, Paul? And I'm like, what's up with you, mate? So he's a bit nervous, but he is fast. Don't get, don't get wrong about him. Uh, but that's the thing. I mean, you look through that top 10, you've got Chris Smiley and Isaac Smith on the front row. Smiley, we've discussed Isaac Smith, a race winner in Mini Challenge. Bruce Winfield is third, runner-up in the championship last year. Max Hart alongside him, runner-up in the championship the year before. Lewis Kent is only fifth, the two-time reigning champion, with Adam Shepard, who you just mentioned, alongside him. He's had championship victories in one-make Honda Civic Racing. Butler, we discussed, is seventh. Callum Newsham alongside him, another front-runner in Mini Challenge, son of touring car race Dave Newsham, of course. And then at the back of the top 10, you've got Jess Hawkins, who's raced in W Series and is a Hollywood stunt driver as well. And Jack, uh, sorry, and uh, Bradley Kent, 10th on the grid. Now, he's a little bit out of position, Brad, because he had a drive shaft go on him halfway through qualifying yesterday. So that uh, number five Hyundai i30N should move forward. But 
That's the back of the top 10, and we're still talking there, Paul, about people that I think can be mixing it at the front. Yeah, you know, we've got a reverse grid uh, race yep. later on. The top 10 get reversed. And for me, just talking about Jess Hawkins, who I absolutely love. She's such a cool girl. Um, she is super fast, and I'm telling you, I reckon she could have a race win today um, in, in that second race if she gets the reverse grid. But uh, I think she'll be on the podium a bit later on. But you never know. There could be some things that happen in front of her today that uh, gets her on the podium for race one. But you are absolutely bang on, mate. That top ten is something that I've always wanted to talk about. And now we've got the cars and we've got the drivers and we've got the teams. This is going to be brilliant. And Chris Smiley on pole has got a bit of support from uh, Jazz as well, hasn't he? So Yes, uh, indeed. But that just shows you where this championship is going. Yeah, we've had uh, representatives from Honda, Hyundai and Cupra here really showing an interest in the championship, supporting the teams uh, that are running their various cars. And that's been invaluable to, I know, a lot of the Cupra teams in particular. Right, green flag lap gets underway then. Final opportunity to get some heat uh, into those Goodyear tyres and a chance for us to get a proper look at how they're going to line up all 25, uh, 24 cars uh, for this 25 minute season opener. Off they go. Hopefully everyone gets off the line in one piece. One or two stragglers at the back. Simon Tomlinson, it looks like, has not got going yet. Let's hope that he can, there we go, gets him fired up, selects first gear, and he will get the number 40 Cupra on its way. So, cars out onto the circuit. We had a, a, quite a lot of heavy rain overnight as well, so I'm intrigued to see if there are a few damp patches, especially under the trees uh, in that final sector. The drivers will be finding that out now and uh, they'll be hoping that they've got the grip that they need when we get up to full racing speed. So pole position, as we've said, Chris Smiley, 1 minute 42.741. He and Isaac Smith, the only two drivers uh, to get into the 1 minute 42s yesterday. Isaac was about two tenths off Chris's time, but as Paul was saying, uh, Chris, having had all of those track limits offences, that's got to be on his mind. Isaac reckons he could have gone faster as well. Uh, I know they all say that, but he will be very happy indeed uh, to have stuck that golf on the front row. So Honda and VW on the front row, Cooper at Hyundai row two, Bruce Winfield and Max Hart. Talking about that Honda, um, the FK7, it's, I'll tell you what, that car is an absolute weapon in the last sector. That's where he got his time through Druids, uh, the fast fifth gear uh, right-hander at the back of the circuit, and then into Lodge, uh, the last corner, which is third gear in one of these cars. That's where he got his time. He was quite far up the road um, from, from the other guys um, and girls in that, uh, that particular sector. So interesting stuff. Right then, here is the grid. Good point that, though. We'll see if that plays into the way this race goes. Chris Smiley and Isaac Smith on the front row, as I said. Honda versus Golf, two newcomers to TCR, followed by two of the title contenders from last year. Bruce Winfield, no longer in a DSG Cooper, so he's going to be rapid with Max Hart for company. The double reigning champion, Lewis Kent, has his brand new Hyundai Velosta TCR fifth on the grid alongside newcomer Adam Shepard, who was fastest at the pre-season media day. Rob Butler is seventh alongside Callum Newsham. Rob Butler, winner in Civic Cup last year. Callum Newsham, former front runner in Mini Challenge. Jess Hawkins and Bradley Kent to round out the top 10. Bradley should move forward from there. We know he's quicker than that, but had that uh, issue with the drive shaft in qualifying. Jack Constable was a winner here, I seem to remember, last year. So look for him to move forward as well. From 11th, Brad Hutchinson, another Mini Challenge race winner, starts alongside him on row number six. Row 7, the Subaru WRX STI, a brand new car to TCR UK competition. And Wart Neils, former uh, Clio Cup front runner, is 13th on the grid, but they've been plagued with issues with that car all weekend. Hoping that they've gone away now. He's got Jack Depper alongside him, followed by Jamie Tonks and Andy Wilmot, who is uh, still getting to grips with his new Hyundai. Matthew Wilson, another former VW Cup and Mini Challenge racer, has Scott Sumpton, Mr. Pickles, as he's known. I'll get into that if I've got time later on. The youngster, 17 years old, is 18th on the grid, ahead of championship veteran Daryl Wilson's Astra and Russell Joyce in the Cooper round at the top. 20, yes, the top 20. Kieran Griffin and Steve Gales towards the rear of the field, and then the very back row will be Simon Tomlinson and Chris Wallace in the Hyundai. We know that there'll be no Hugo Cook, who was due to start 25th on the grid. A couple of other things to mention, a couple of other um, prizes up for grabs, actually, uh, in the TCR UK Championship this year. Uh, not just the overall title, uh, but we've got the uh, competition for over 40s, which is supported by Goodyear for the highest placed over 40 uh, in the race. And also the Tom Walker Memorial Trophy, which is handed out to the highest point scorer uh, for uh, a driver who is either new to the championship or hasn't had a podium finish before. So there's lots to fight for wherever you are in the field. Right then, Paul, who is your money on first race of the season? 
Oh, why would you ask me this? <laughs> why would you ask so me that this? you haven't got time to ask me. <laughs> oh, mate. Do you know what? I'm going to go with Chris Smiley. If he gets it off the line and is leading, I think he can control the race, especially with difficulties in overtaking round here and, and his car being so strong in that last sector. But, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. But, yeah, I reckon any of the top four, maybe even top five, can can win this i'm so so looking forward to it but let's have it eh? yes the start will be important that's for sure and that start is just a few seconds away the green flag waved at the back of the field the 2022 tcr uk championship about to burst into life here for 25 minutes at alton park red lights go on chris smiley on the left isaac smith on the right out they go off they go and not a great start from isaac smith that's max hart in the green and white hyundai coming into second place no not quite he's up the inside of smith smiley holds on to the advantage hart on the inside for second will not get into p2 and Lewis Kent gets past Bruce Winfield for fourth place, all cleanly through Old Hall, I think, and they barrel down towards Cascades. The front row drivers stay the same, but Max Hart already on the move. Yeah, Max Hart made a great start, didn't he? But uh, another fantastic move from uh, Atan Wharton Hills in the Subaru. Down the inside of Jess Hawkins, doesn't squeeze her too much, but uh, yeah, it's all going off. This is a fast, fast left, and they're coming up, and look at that, is that Bruce Winfield? Yeah. Yeah, that was scary. Adam Shepard was up the inside of him. Bruce struggling on cold tyres. This was a thing that he struggled with a bit last year as well. And he's lost a couple of positions in the early going. Into the shell hair and we go. Side by side there between the blue Audi of Brad Hutchinson. And on Hutchinson even on the outside with Bradley Kent and Hutchinson sideways coming out of the chicane. Leaders of Britons and Smiley is not really getting away here. It's early days, I know. Oh, Rob Butler. Rob Butler slowing in the golf. That's a real shame. One of the potential front runners in trouble early. Yeah, I wonder what's happened there. That's a real shame because he was he was one of my uh, people to watch. So, yeah, a bit of a nightmare for him. But as they come down now to the second chicane at Hislops, this this is where you need to get a good exit into Nickerbrook and up Clay Hill. Yeah, out of Nickerbrook. Uh, oh, and Hutchison as well. So Hutchison was slow or a bit sideways out of Shell, and he's not made it to the Britain chicane. That's a real shame for the most excitable driver on the grid. Ten-second penalty, by the way, for Steve Gales, number 35. He was on the jacks after the one-minute board had been shown on the grid. He's running towards the back of the field. Ten seconds will be added to his race time at the end. Right then, into Lodge Corner for the first time of asking. Chris Smiley leads the way. Isaac Smith in second place. Max Hart going after him, though, in the Jam Sport run. Hyundai in third. Fourth, then, is Lewis Kent side by side further back. And that was Andy Wilmot with a lovely move on the inside of Darrell Wilson. Yeah, that was a great move, wasn't it? Late lunch. All the tyres look like they're up to temperature now. Uh, Rob Butler out the car. Uh, was there any contact between Hutchison and Butler? But we don't know, do we? It's just interesting that they've both pulled off mm. on the first lap. They were close to each other on the grid. They weren't right next to each other, but if one of them had gone back and the other had gone forward, they could have met in the middle, I suppose. See if we can piece that together later on in the race. Right, Isaac Smith. P2 in the first sector is a couple of tenths quicker than Chris Smiley. But as you said, these two cars, or three cars here, Honda, Golf and Hyundai, they're going to have strengths and weaknesses in different parts of the circuit. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know from driving the Golf myself, it's got a great change of direction, especially through the slower chicanes that we're in now. So it's going to be a, it's, it's going to be a real battle of wits coming through here now. Now, this is... Hutchison, who's got Ant Wharton Eels behind him and Bradley Kent to the outside. Now, snap of oversteer there. That almost tells me something broke in the rear suspension, Paul. Oh, right. Okay, then. So, oh, oh, oh well, I tell Adam you. Shepherd. <laughs> Adam Shepherd, that will do your track in no favours. You're going to have to go ATS after that, lad. That's that's typical of uh, of the exit of Cascade. Yeah. It did look like Ant Wharton Eels maybe touched the back of Hutchison. It did look that way. That's an interesting uh, place to get sideways. But like you say, it could be a rear toe link or something. So I don't know if Ant has, has touched him there, but uh, great replays from the team there. I don't want to jinx it, but Ant is doing really well. That white and green Subaru into the top 10 now, having done a total of five laps all day on uh, Friday's test sessions, and then uh, finally got out for a full session in qualifying, and is running at the moment in a position inside the top 10. Right, into Old Hall Corner goes to fight for fifth. This is Bruce Winfield ahead of Callum Newsham and Jack Constable, three of the Coopers together. The leading trio are at Cascade, but this the closest battle inside the top 10. Winfield does seem to be struggling at the moment. What have you spotted, Paul? Yeah, so Bradley Kent is dropping like a stone, isn't he? He's oh, uh, down in 18th. He's last now, so he's obviously stopped somewhere as well, uh, which is a real shame. He's having a nightmare, but look at this, side by side. 
Oh, Constable, great move. That was on his teammate, wasn't it? Callum Newsham. Yeah, brave place to make a pass that into Ireland Ben. Constable, I thought, would do a little bit better than he qualified. 11th place on the grid was Jack, but he really came on strong through the second half of uh, 2021, didn't he? And uh, it all sort of culminated in those couple of race wins. One here at Onton Park and one at Donington Park. And he's showing that form again now in the race. Lead gap fluctuating a bit, but Isaac Smith has the fastest lap. Uh, not many people have been mentioning Isaac as a potential threat for this championship. I think they should have been. This is seriously impressive. Yeah, seriously impressive. He, you know, he's a fast kid. He's a fast peddler. Knows how to drive a front-wheel drive car. Um, but I've got to admit, I just think, look at that. That's the sector now where Smiley in that Honda is just pulling away into Druids. And Isaac needs to be closer uh, than that going into Lodge to get a run, actually, into uh, the first corner old hole. But I will say, I'm seeing a flash of brake lights from a couple of cars now. Alton Park, notoriously hard on brakes. The flash of the brake lights is people left foot braking, just trying to get that pedal back up so it feels like it can actually brake properly. So that confidence may be going in, a, in some of the drivers. But look at third place. Max High's on a mission. This is game on right up our oh, track limits. Better be careful of that. You can get away with it a couple of times, but then eventually you will start getting time added onto your race. I don't think Max cares, though. You mentioned the word confidence. He is one of the most confident drivers on the grid, the young Irishman, in his third season of TCR competition now. And through certain areas of the circuit, he looks like at least a match for Isaac Smith. And he will still be thinking about the race win here, won't he, Max? We've got 19 minutes to go. If he can clear the golf quickly, he might have something for Chris Smiley. So this is an important battle. At this part of the circuit, the golf gets away slightly, but we know that Max does not back out of those 50-50 moves, does he? Yeah, and Max will be the only one in third place who's done a proper, proper race yeah. run over the time he's been in that car. Tell you what, that that, uh, that looks like a high on die rally car at the minute. I don't think he's been on the black stuff too much, has he, to be fair? But uh, he's looking seriously fast. Yeah. Look at this. He's got to, he's just got to try and set him up to have a run out of uh, the last bit of Nicker Brook as he goes through his slops now um, and try and get a run into Druids, then make him defend into the last corner lodge. But Isaac looks like he's got it covered, gets a great exit, doesn't he, up to Clay Hill. That's, that's where he's going to have a problem trying to pass around here. And of course, as Isaac goes a little bit more defensive, so Chris Smiley gets away slightly. Further back, and Wart Neal's having fun here. Eighth place battle this is. Wart Neal's the Subaru, the Cupra of Jess Hawkins, and Adam Shepard recovering from that grassy, bouncy moment at Cascades earlier on is right back on their tail. Now remember, it's a top 10 grid reversal based upon the results of this race that will form the grid for race two. So at the moment, Adam Shepard would be on pole for race two. I don't think he cares about that, though. He wants to go forward further. No, he doesn't, does he? And obviously, that, that car took a massive hit. Look at Jess, out braking, trying to get the switch back now. But you've got to be careful of Adam Shepard, who's going to try and get me Oh, and Warren Hill slows them up so much now that Shepard is now going to have the run on Jess Hawkins. And Jess is going to have to drop back and regroup. Or is she going to try and go around the outside with the pink mirrors? Oh, no, not quite got the grip out there. I'll tell you what, Wart Neils is struggling a bit. I mean, they've done so little running. They can't have done a race run on that Subaru. They have no idea what the tyre wear is going to be like. And I think at this stage of the race, maybe Ant would be better just to let Shepard go rather than put everything on the line to defend eighth place. But knowing Ant and the fact that he's come out of short oval racing, he says in his commentator's information form that he uh, knows how to look after himself on the track, which I think is a euphemism for getting his elbows out and defending a position. Well, that's exactly what he's doing. Look, Shepard can't get through and needs to be careful Adam not to leave the door open for Jess to get back at him yeah I think Jess Hawkins is playing a long the long game she's got a bit of time for them to have a bit of contact and do two people here but this is basically the battle for pole position yeah exactly these would be the top three on the grid for race number two later on today but uh, Adam Shepard doesn't yet know if he's got the budget to do the full season I really hope he does because he could be a championship contender that's certainly his goal and so he wants to get as many points as he can goes to the outside of Walt Neils into his lobs you can do that but you have to be a bit further alongside to then force your way onto the inside for the left-hander. Into Nickerbrook they go then, back up the hill. The Hyundai normally is good at this part of the circuit, and Wart Neils gets sideways. Replay here, meanwhile, of the second and third place cars running a bit wide out of Cascades. Oh, right, OK, so Max Hart was pushing hard. He was running wide through um, through Cascades in that uh, that green Hyundai. And Wart Neils, is this is done. Oh, you I'll tell you what, and you're playing a dangerous game. Watch how late Shepard breaks now. I bet you he tries to do it round the outside. He's going to get squeezed on the grass. And Wart Neils is no mug. He doesn't get squeezed on the grass, but it's track limits and it's banging doors. But look at this now as they head towards the first corner. 
Jess Hawkins with the pink mirrors. She's going to have a bit of this as well, is she? Or is it going to be around the outside again? It is oh. Adam Shepard. What a move. Brilliant. And Jess Hawkins is now going to get the run down to Cascades and try and do the same. Brilliant stuff. Talk about commitment. Brilliant stuff from Adam Shepard. And he's into eighth position. I think he's now got the pace to get away. I'm worried for a second there that Jess Hawkins was going to make that three wide into Old Hall. She's trying to get up the inside of Walt Neils, who's having absolutely none of it. Slams the door in her face. And they almost overlap as they head towards the fastest corner on the circuit, Island Bend. Already there, you can see the Hyundai of Adam Shepard starting to break clear now. The Subaru down to ninth, Hawkins 10th. They're not a million miles uh, ahead of Jamie Tonks and Jack Tepper, Depper, even. Uh, Tonks was, Tonk was ahead of Depper at the start of the lap, but Depper back in front, I think, by the time they get to the top end of the circuit. Jamie Tonks is running a very similar livery to Jess Hawkins as, his, as uh, she, he is her teammate. But he is in a DSG car, the only DSG gearbox Cooper on the grid. Here comes Hawkins back alongside over Hilltop. Yeah, that car. Oh, no, oh. no, 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 no. That was just a bit early to be turning across the front of Van Warnheels, but gets it done. I tell you what, she is a brave, brave person because I would never have had that on. But to be fair to Van Warnheels, he had to come out the throttle there or risk putting them both in the barrier. Little flick of the brake lights for Jess. She must be getting a long pedal, getting a bit of pad knock off off the curb. The pad's knocking away from the disc. So really, really good stuff from Jess. Committed and got the job done. But look at this now. So do they come together or does Jess? Jess moves over a touch. She moves over a touch, but look at that. She turns into the oversteer, gets the job done, keeps the throttle wide open. I've got to say, though, looking at Ant's car, from fourth gear onwards, that car looks like it's either aerodynamically inefficient or it just doesn't have the power. So that's where he's really struggling. Uh, and Ant and the whole Jam Sport team have been very realistic about their prospects with that car. They, they hope to be in contention for good results by the end of the year. They're not necessarily expecting to be setting the world alight uh, from round one. It's very much a development project for uh, a car that has uh, been troublesome, I think it's fair to say, wherever it's raced. But now they've got the reliability a little bit more under control. They might be able to start challenging for some good results. Right, three Britons go the leading three. Smiley, Smith and Hart, who's still bouncing over the curbs. Uh, Max was four tenths quicker than Smith on the previous lap, so he's closing back in on the second place golf as they come down into his lops. Quiet race so far for Lewis Kent, and look who he's got for company. Bruce Winfield, runner up to Lewis last year in the championship, is gaining on him pretty rapidly now in fifth. Constable sixth, good drive from him. Newsham seventh, and then the big gap back, courtesy of these three that have been squabbling, uh, delaying each other. The Shepherd comes through in eight. Hawkins ninth. Wart Neal's tenth. But for how much longer, Paul, can he hang on to this pole position for race two? Jack Depper alongside him already. And I think he's going to go through. Not quite. Oh, no. But Jack Depper actually outbraked himself. And that is amazing stuff for Ant Wart Neal's. And is, I tell you, if I was going to put my money on someone battling for a, a top ten reverse grid yes. pole position, I'd say Ant Wart Neal's. As long as these three behind him keep battling, he'll be OK. But I tell you what, Jack Depper will be fast in that golf it's going to be difficult for him yeah jack raced the golf a few times last season didn't he i'm pretty sure his first appearance in it was here uh, at alton park uh yes it was where he had a uh, set of top 10 results a best of sixth so uh looking to try and get back into that top 10 here and maybe look towards a good result in race two <laughs> how many times have we seen max hart doing that at various corners running wide he's got to be flirting now hasn't he with a trap limits warning well, we've seen him run wide at the places where you really can't run wide. Yes. Cascades has got a power pad for track limits, so you run over that and you're, you're in trouble. So you get three goals at it all the way around the circuit. And also Old Hall, the first corner's got that, and he has been running wide there. But uh, Chris Smiley in the Honda will just be looking in his mirror and thinking, nice one. He can now start to look after his tyres for the last uh, 12 minutes of this race, which Max hasn't been able to do because he's been bouncing off the kerbs, on the grass, running wide on track limits. He wants that P2, and that's what I love about Max. He could just play the long game, get a steady finish for this first race, but no, he's going to put the pressure on. This is where the action will be. And of course, they all think that Chris Smiley is going to be one of the favourites for the championship. So with Smiley leading the race, people like Max Hart and Isaac Smith, they're determined not to lose too many points to him here. So finishing second in this race, even if they can't go after Chris, could be valuable uh, for their championship hopes. Up through Druids they go then. We're on the eighth lap of the race with 11 minutes and 20 seconds to go. So Paul is right. There's still a long way to go in this. And tyre management could be a factor. Oh, oh Ant Warneels. That is such a shame. Now, uh, 
he's slowed down, I believe, coming over Hilltop. He's not been off the road. It's a mechanical issue. We'll get back to that in a moment, though, because, Paul, the second place battle is as close as ever. Oh, it is. And look, now Isaac is having to defend in the one, two, three. Is it going to be a late lunge from Max? No, doesn't even try and make him defend. But uh, Max Hart now running. Oh, he's not running track limits. He may know that he's going to start getting in a bit of trouble. This is where I think Max struggles. He can't carry the speed through. Look at the speed, Isaac fires into Cascades, keeps it on uh, on the track. But look at that run from Max Hart. Max Hart got a great run because he slowed it down and drove it through. And now he's flashing the lights and trying to duck one way and then the other. And this is going to be a really late lunge into the hairpin, but there's just not enough braking space to do it. You've got to start by setting them up at the first chicane and then try and get them into hislops. I love watching Max Hart race because he's always like this. He's always exciting, always on the attack, never happy to settle for anything. And uh, that's definitely the case here in this first round of the championship. Conte, he's taking a completely different line through that Britain chicane than anybody else is. Uh, and he's not really gaining him any time, but it sure is spectacular to watch. Chris Wallace goes a lap down to the race leader, Chris Smiley, uh, who on the previous lap, Max Hart was every bit as quick as. So with 10 minutes to go, Paul, do you think he could still do something about Smiley if he can clear Isaac Smith? It's a big if, I know, but he's clearly got the pace. Nah, no chance. I'll be honest with you, because if you look at, look at the eye-wateringly fast, that Honda, it's done a 42.7, um, and it's like three and four tenths up the road on what anyone else has done um, fastest lap time. So I think Chris Smiley is controlling the race. And thinking back, I remember, uh, as we see P2 and P3 battle, this is a great battle. That is where you don't want to defend, and Isaac now is going to compromise himself. Yeah. This is the run that he needs. Can he get down the inside? I tell you what, he's got the overlap. I think he's done him. That was absolute precision from Max Hart. Brilliant stuff. Gets it done early doors. Isaac will probably give that space up and try to go down to Cascades, late on the brakes and set it up again. That was first class. If you make someone de defend at the last corner lodge, you've got a great chance. But look how good he is on the brakes as he tries to catch the back up. He's got a load of oversteer as he pushes him through to the exit of Cascades. It's still game on. Yeah, that's the part of the circuit where Max has been struggling and he really struggled to get the high end. I wowed up that time into Cascades. He did manage to hold the apex just about though. So no way through for Isaac. He's wide again though at Ireland. And this time Smith might be able to get a, a level with him into the hair, but he can't get to the inside, tries the outside, nothing doing. This is losing them both even more time now to Chris Smiley, who, by the way, has the fastest lap, and it's about two or three hundredths quicker than he went in qualifying yesterday. That is seriously impressive on a race setup for Chris Smiley. He clearly is the class of the field in this one. Eight and a half minutes to go. There is the race leader. There's been something dangling off that left front corner of the Honda since the start of the race, Paul. I don't think it's anything serious, is it? No, it's just one of the wheel arches. I do notice a lot of these TCR cars, if they do bang a kerb, they run quite low at the front. Uh, I've noticed that FK7 Honda. And if you bang off a kerb and get a compression, you'll just pop the, uh, the side of the wheel arch out. So it's nothing to worry about. But um, just going back to that Honda, that car pitched up um, with Ash Sutton here a few years ago and it absolutely destroyed the field. So there will be some setup um, that they've got. They will have had to tweak it a bit. Maybe the tyres are a touch different uh, from Goodyear uh, compared to a few years ago. Was, what was that? That was a lot of smoke from the front left of Bruce Winfield's car. Um, he's just trying to work his way back and he's dropped dropped a couple of places, but he'll be, he'll be happy with the fifth place. Well, obviously not because he's trying, <laughs> he's trying to fire one at Lewis Kent, isn't he? Uh, because they're being caught quite rapidly, actually, by Jack Constable looking the Power Max Racing Cooper behind. So the Area Motorsport Cooper ahead of the Power Max example, there is Callum Newsham. Uh, that that you saw uh, coming out of the uh, Winfield Cooper was actually water. He was on the grass out of Druids, which is not a good place to be normally, and uh, shows how much rain we've had uh, overnight here in the Northwest. Chris Wallace comes through a lap down. Uh, running in uh, 20th place. We've lost Walt Neils and Bradley Kent to the pit lane. Rob Butler and Brad Hutchinson, of course, stopping out on track on the opening lap of the race. You can see, oh, yeah, it's inside the uh, wheel guard, actually, isn't it? That uh, uh, thing that's hanging out of the left front corner of Smiley's car. Certainly not slowing him down, though. His last lap was a 44.1. It was three tenths nearly quicker uh, than Max Hart. What is that, Paul? Do you it's, think? Uh, it's a wheel arch in it. Right. Yeah, so that's all it was. I got that wrong. I thought it was actually the wheel arch um, side of the aerodynamics there. But yeah, wheel arch in it. To be honest, it's not something you would want hanging out. It's only a, a piece of flimsy plastic, but um, you never know what's going to happen with that. If you've got someone in the uh, race director's box and they're saying that looks like a danger, it could fly out, then they'll be keeping an eye on it. Hopefully they, they let that go because um, I'd like to see, uh, I really would like to see Chris come pitch up and, and, and get the race win here. But um, yeah, that hopefully won't 
go any further. No pit to uh, car radio in this championship, so he won't know about that at all. Is Max Hart catching him? In the first sector, Max was a tenth and a half faster, then another half a tenth faster in sector two. It's marginal, and of course, we know the Honda's good in the final sector, but let's just see what these lap times are like. Max certainly is getting away from Isaac Smith. There goes the Honda, there goes the Hyundai. It's a 43.9 for the leader, a 43.6 for Max. 2.4 seconds, only five and three quarter minutes to go there, so I don't think he's quite going to get there. This is game on, though. Lewis Kent in the uh, new to the UK. Hyundai Veloster. Oh, Andy Wilmot is off. That is exiting Nickerbrook, I think, and looks like he's nudged the barriers there, Paul. Yeah. Um, if that is exiting Nickerbrook, that is a bizarre place to, to lob it off, unless you've caught a left rear on the grass or you've been helped round. Um, Here we but go. It's, let's have a look. Is he... Has Jamie he, Tonks, I think, in front of him. Has he touched the left rear on the grass? Oh, oh, oh. got the tyre stack. Oh, he's hit that tyre stack properly hard, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. no. Oh, that, that is a shame as well. He was doing well. 12th place, Andy Wilmot. And did you see that? It's completely broken the um, the, the front tracker uh, oh, arm on it. So, no. so game over. Smash that to pieces. That is such an easy thing to do. As you turn the steering through there, you're always trying to get as close as you can. But you've always got the wheel protruding. And obviously, that can catch any kind of, uh, of obstruction that's there. And the obstruction was the tyres on the apex to stop people cutting the corner. Um, but look at this, it is game on. Brucey Winfield there in the 37 is definitely, definitely giving him a hard time. This new car probably hasn't done a lot of race runs. No, uh, and it's never raced anywhere in Europe, actually, the Veloster. Apparently, Hyundai contacted Essex and Kent Motorsport, as uh, as they would put it, the leading Hyundai team here in TCR UK. They've certainly been the most successful one over the last few years, uh, and said, look, we want to run a Veloster in Europe. We think you're the people to do it. So uh, uh, pretty high praise that from Hyundai, and uh, the Veloster, I'm sure, will be a bit of a work in progress as the season develops, but uh, you know, a solid fourth or fifth place finish in round one would not be a bad way to start his title defence. There'll be a little concern, though, I think, to see these top three so far up the road. The lead gap back out again that time, so Smiley, I think, had some pace in hand, didn't he? Because he's just dropped down into a 44-0. That's the fastest he's been uh, for quite some time. And again, that's his experience. Chris Smiley knows when to push, knows when to back off. Uh, and with four minutes to go now, just less, I think he's got this in hand. Yeah, definitely. I think that I think the, the top three drivers, maybe even Hart, uh, knowing <laughs> know, knowing Max, he won't have backed off, but they're all trying to just score big points, aren't they? And I can just tell by the body language of that car of Chris Smiley in the 22, he's just trying to stroke the car home. You know, he'll, uh, he'll hear every knock, uh, every sound in the car now, and he'll just try and stay off the kerbs. And uh, I, I have noticed he's not like massively into trap limits at the minute, so he's only clipping the curbs here and there. But look at Max, still going across the grass, whacking the curbs. So he's obviously thinking it's game on. But um, but yeah. And another thing I was just going to say before I forget is um, a shout to uh, to Adam Weaver as well from PMR Power Max Racing, who's uh, driver. Um, uh, Jack Constable's doing an amazing job. He's actually got COVID at the minute, so he's sat at home. The the, 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 the legend that owns uh, PMR is um, watching from home. So I hope you're well soon, Captain, and uh, your boy's doing a good job. Yes, I hope him a, a speedy recovery. Uh, we'll hope to see you back for Donington Park, uh, our next TCR UK round, which will also be a part of the uh, British GT package in a month or so's time. Right then, two and a half minutes to go, so we're going to have time for two more laps after this one. And Bruce Winfield, he can get close to Lewis Kemp, but he doesn't seem to be able to get close in the right places, does he? Lewis is good out of Druids, and that uh, is followed by the best overtaking opportunity on the track. This corner, Lodge Corner, uh, where Bruce just isn't able to quite get on his tail. He's watching the testing sessions, uh, one of the testing sessions, alongside Bruce's father on uh, Friday, and he was uh, nervous as anything during a, a test session. So uh, I wonder how he's feeling now, watching his boy fighting for fourth place. He should be used to it by now, though. Bruce was one of the real standout performers in 2021. As we said, he came uh, really out of nowhere in the second half of the season to finish really strongly second place in the championship. And uh, Bruce Winfield, who got himself two race wins last year, had a really good run out of Cascades. Lewis Kent made a mistake, and Winfield is alongside him down the lakeside straight. He's got the inside for Ireland Bend, and Lewis should know better than to fight it, but he doesn't. He tries to hang on on the outside. <laughs> Winfield goes through, but that was close. What a move. That was proper. You could just see the champ just running out of road, running out of tyre grip, but uh, he kept it on, didn't he? And uh, he tried his hardest, didn't give up. Uh, and lay down on that one, but um, this is a great run out for the new car. And I, I must admit, I think Lewis will be really happy with this. They'll have so much information to work off, and uh, it's not over yet. You know, uh, Bruce 
Bruce could uh, come back under attack here. Yeah, he's certainly feeling the need to defend into his lobs, even though he was a good few car lengths clear uh, of the Veloster. So Lewis Kent sporting the number one on his car, looking to try and get back through. But, you know, losing a position in this race isn't necessarily the end of the world. That's one position higher on the grid now uh, for the second race later on. So I'm sure that will be somewhere in the back of his mind. He's still got the headlights on those. So I think he's still thinking attack for the time being as we come towards the completion of the penultimate lap. Got a couple of more cars going a lap down there. That looks like Kieran Griffin and uh, Chris Wallace who slip a lap behind the leaders. Two drivers uh, competing uh, for positions outside of the top 10, but they'll very much be happy to get to the end uh, of this race in one piece, I suspect. First race of the season, we've had a few drop by the wayside, but really only one because of accident damage, and that one self-inflicted uh, by Andy Wilmot. Generally speaking, Paul, with a lap to go, I hope I'm not cursing it, we've had some really good driving standards out there. I, I've got to admit, the first thing I'll be saying to the guys on the interviews in a, in a couple of minutes' time will be, you boys and girls have driven exceptionally well, because I know how difficult it is around here. Thin track, difficult to overtake, but the passes we've seen have been lovely. And though there was a bit of contact between Ant Waterneels and Jess, but they will both probably give each other a hug and say, that was some cool racing. Uh, it's certainly cool to watch, that is for sure. Right, final lap of the race then. Chris Smiley enjoys a 2.3 second advantage over this man, Chris uh, Max Hart, in the uh, Hyundai i30N, run by Jam Sport. There goes Chris Smiley over the hill. He's well and truly backed it off now on the final lap, I think. And Chris Smiley is now less than half a lap away from taking his first victory in the TCR UK Championship. There's Isaac Smith third, and then these two lapped cars. Now, Bruce Winfield's going to catch these two. Kieran Griffin just behind uh, the Simon Tomlinson Cooper. Uh, the worst part of the circuit, really. His lops and Nickerbrook. He should get through OK, but I wonder whether that might delay Lewis Kent enough to allow uh, Jack Constable to catch him. We shall find out shortly. Chris Smiley, though, comes out of Druid's Corner down towards the last turn. It's been a brilliant fairy tale story, this, for Chris and the whole Restart Racing crew. But Taylor's crew, uh, they've moved over uh, from racing in the BTCC together. They know each other. They get on well. They've had success before. And Chris Smiley is going to open his 2022 account with a race victory. He is the 17th different driver to win a TCR UK race. And he does it with a light to flag victory here at Alton from Max Hart second, Isaac Smith third, fourth. We'll go to Winfield and just on the line in his fifth place. Lewis Kent, but Jack Constable really did gain on him there in the closing stages. Callum Newsh from the white and red Cooper comes through in seventh. Jack Depper with a really solid run there. Jack Depper uh, will come home in the eighth place, having started 14th, made a couple of good overtakes, and uh, he is going to bring that uh, golf run by Capture Motorsport out of Lodge Corner in eighth. Jess Hawkins will be ninth, and Jamie Tonks, her teammate, in tenth. So the two area motorsport with fast R cars. Uh, both coming through inside the top 10. Paul's going to head down to have a chat with the drivers. If we've got time, we will uh, bring you those interviews. But if not, then do head over to the TCR UK social media pages for the uh, the uh, full lowdown after that first race of the day. And uh, Paul O'Neill will be chatting away to uh, as many of the drivers as he can. He'll certainly be talking to this man, Chris Smiley, who arguably came into the championship as the pre-season favourite, a very late addition to the TCR UK grid was Chris, but uh, a man who is a proven race winner in front-wheel drive touring cars, and it was very much expected that he would be able to adapt to TCR. Well, you can see that uh, little bit of uh, plastic just flapping around in the left front corner. That didn't distract him at all, though, and it was a lights to flag victory. All 15 laps were led by the number 22 Honda. So, an entertaining season opener for the TCR UK Championship. It's Chris Smiley that gets the win from Max Hart, uh, second place. Third for Isaac Smith, a really good debut, that for Isaac. Can't say enough about uh, that young man and what an impressive drive it was to third place. Bruce Winfield, fourth. Lewis Kent slipping down to fifth ahead of Jack Constable and Callum Newsham, who both made a lot of progress. So, too, Jack Depper in eighth. Jess Hawkins, ninth, after that battle with... Uh, and Wart Neils, and it will be an area motorsport with fast R12 on the grid for race two because Jamie Tonks, her teammate, rounded out that top 10, and it's a top 10 grid reversal for the second race. Matthew Wilson didn't mention him, but in the new Cooper Leon Competition, the uh, JWB motorsport car that started 17th, he moved, he moved up into 11th, whilst Adam Shepard will be disappointed, I'm sure, with 12th place. Daryl Wilson, 13th, Scott Sumpton is 14th, with Russell Joyce rounding out the top 15. Inside the top 15, then it was Stephen Gale, Simon Tomlinson, Kieran Griffin, 
and uh, uh, Chris Wallace, who were the last of the finishers. We lost Andy Wilmot, Antwort Neils, Bradley Kent, Rob Butler and Brad Hutchinson as Chris Smiley heads into the uh, paddock. But a brilliant opening race of the season for TCR UK, dominated by Chris Smiley. He will not have it that easy in race number two, though. Be sure to join us later in the day. Race two for TCR UK kicking off at 2.45. We'll see you then.